Senior Captain Lino Azul and the Black Knights are coming off a shutout win in the opening round of the playoffs. As he does every week during the football season, Lino follows up the bright Friday night lights with the early Saturday morning sunrise as he heads to Stoughton Bakery, a family-owned business by the Azuls. My parents bought the bakery back in 2009. It was a big change in our lives and it was a big commitment, but I thought, I think it's been for the better. Every Saturday morning, I wake up at around uh, like 5.30 a.m., take a shower, brush my teeth, get dressed, and then I uh, hop in my car and drive over to Stoughton Bakery. Its address is 29 Wyman Street, right next to the train station in Stoughton Center. And uh, we sell a bunch of different stuff. We have from traditional Portuguese bread, traditional Portuguese pastries. We sell breakfast sandwiches, lunch, even some like soup if you wanted to have dinner, even scratch tickets if you, want, if you want to grab a scratch ticket before you jump on the train, coffee in the morning, everything. My favorite thing here is probably, I'd have to say, apple turnovers or apple strudels. Um, it's great, they're like mini apple pies. You, you really can't beat that, like $2 for a mini apple pie and that's a great thing like, to have in the morning for a quick breakfast with a coffee or something. We all do everything here at the bakery. I mean, I, I know how to bake everything. I know how to like work all the machines, the registers, and we all do. And that just came with experience. Over seven years, we figured that we have all should know how to do everything. When it comes to like the game, my mom has like Black Knight signs. She has a picture of me and my jersey up. And uh, she does, she told me she gets a lot of calls on Saturday mornings asking how the boys did last night. And uh, a bunch of customers, whenever I come in, they're always talking about the team and I get to like have a nice conversation with them about like how we did, where, where we see ourselves going this season. So it's, it's pretty cool for to have that personal experience with all the customers. I mean, we love all our customers. Um, I know probably 90% of them on a first name basis. And we've gotten really close with some of them over the years, some of them like turning into family friends. And that's really a cool experience that you don't get to, you don't get to have with most jobs. Each member of the Azul family helps run the bakery, but it's Lino's mother, Anne, who is the driving force behind its success. My mom is the hardest working person I know. I'm so proud of my mother. Um, she wakes up every morning around 4.15 to open up at five and she does this six days a week. Her specifically brought this place up. It used to be just an old place that, old, that just sold bread, and we've kind of Americanized it a little bit, and the things that she's done with it is honestly a wonder to me. Um, with all the new products she brought in, all the decorations like around the holidays, and all the new faces she's brought in, and uh, the mo thing I admire the most about her is that she creates a personal connection with all of her customers. She knows everyone by first name. Everyone that, come in here, everyone that comes in here lo loves her, and everyone around the town has nothing but good things to say about her. The best thing that I take away personally, and I think my family values, values the same thing very much, is uh, the bakery has really brought us closer together as a family. Every family goes through up and downs, and uh, we had a little bit of a rough time a few years back, but we bought the bakery, and um, when all five, all five of my family members were working here together, it really brought us together. I mean, uh, we were working here every day after school together, all five of us, every Saturday and every Sunday. So this is just way more time, all of us being together. And um, I think we really got to know each other better and we started to like grow, like grow more together as a family. And I, now I think that we're a really tight knit group and that we really love each other and we love spending time with each other. So I can guarantee if anyone ever comes into the bakery that you will get the most personable service. Even if you don't like the food, I guarantee that if you come here, You'll always get service with a smile from either my mom, myself, my sisters, or any, other, any of the other employees here. And uh, that's really what we pride ourselves on. So if you come in here, expect to be served with a smile and uh, give you your stuff and tell you have a good day. Lino continues his Saturday morning routine with the short drive over to Stoughton High to join the rest of his team to break down film from the previous night's game and start to prepare for the week ahead. So the Saturday morning routine uh, from week one till the end of the year, it's always the same thing. You kind of wake up in the morning, wish you didn't have to get up for film, and put on your Bass Pro hat, your sweatpants, and a sweatshirt. I think definitely there's always room for improvement, and the film, film goes to show that. So you come in, and obviously you see like each and every play, there's even one little tiny thing you could have done better, and it could make the difference. In, I mean, obviously in a 34 nothing game, it, it wouldn't change much, but you never know what's going to come next. Like, obviously last week we had Milford, we beat them 34 nothing, but coming this week, maybe a mistake we made in Milford could cost us our season against Duxbury. So there's always room for improvement, no matter what the score was the last week or what's going to happen next week. 
if I'm watching myself on offense, I watch my footwork, make sure I'm not doing false steps. And then defensively, I watch uh, my reads. The coaches preach eyes in the right spot, so I make sure I'm reading my key and uh, making plays on the passes. You did good because your eyes are in the right spot. Looking at your keys. You saw it was a pass, eyes on it. He didn't even know it was a pitch pass. He just saw 13, his eyes are in his keys, and you guys both dropped, that's good. You can't really see as well in like real time like what you did or you can't watch all 11 guys and see what happened wrong on a big play you let up or what you did well on, a, on one of your good plays. You just kind of, the speed of the game kind of over, overlooks that. So, you know, when you come and watch the film, break it down, you can see what you did well, what you, what you didn't do well, and you can improve on it and you know the areas you need to work on most in the game. Just having the mindset of just critiquing yourself, but then also you have to watch the opponent, seeing their tendencies, seeing what they like to do, what they set up in, so you can make your calls against that during the games on Friday night. Football is basically a chess match with uh, helmets and shoulder pads on. It's such a mental game. You gotta go know exactly where you're being. I don't care if you're the best athlete in the world. If you don't know what you're doing, you can't play. So uh, it's just like, Watching film, we understand what the other teams do in their tendencies. I like to see like what they like to do on first down, what they do like third and short, third and long, different types of situations, so I can get a feel for what they're trying to run with their offense. Oh, good. Gentlemen, we have drives like this Friday night. Keep the ball away from them, we'll be in good shape. Amidst a busy week preparing for the Duxbury playoff game, Four members of the team were recognized for their work off the field at the annual National Honor Society induction ceremony. Junior Justin Lee was inducted, joining his senior teammates Lino Azul, David Salucci, and Ryan Sullivan, who are already members. Salucci is one of five senior officers. Leadership means the influence you have on people to do something extraordinary. A leader is someone who is not afraid to stand by his or her decision, even if that sometimes means standing alone. Leaders have a drive to transform the world. A leader is that person everyone looks to for advice, confidence, and a smile. A leader is someone who overcomes obstacles each day, not only for themselves, but to better the lives of others. A leader is made up of uh, the other four pillars of National Honor Society, scholarship, service, and character. Being a leader means having an innate belief that the sky is never the limit. Game day is almost here. The Black Knights need three more wins to play for a state title at Gillette Stadium, but there is a good chance this game against Duxbury will be the toughest. The Dragons are widely regarded as the top team in the state. They outscore their opponents by an average of almost 40 points per game. Quarterback Bobby Mameron is just four touchdowns away from becoming the state's all-time leader in passing touchdowns. Their 56-7 win in the first round of the playoffs improved their record to 8-0. There is no doubt Duxbury is a juggernaut, but Stoughton feels prepared heading into this Division II South semifinal clash. The mindset is that we just have to play our type of football. Uh, we have to control the game, control the tempo, and uh, we just can't, can't give up an inch. I mean, obviously going in knowing that they're the number one team in the state, uh, it might scare some people. I think, I think it motivates us. Uh, I think it'll push us to work even harder. Going into this game, I think we realize we have to play our best football, you know, the best we played all year. We really have to uh, limit the penalties and, you know, control the ball and just make sure that every time we have the ball or they have the ball, we do the most to limit them and we do the most to you know, make ourselves prosper. You know? We can't let them dictate like, what's going to happen in the game. We have to come out there and from the very first drive, we have to dictate what's going to go on in the game. I think we're definitely confident in ourselves, but we're not cocky. You know? We're definitely not going to overlook a team like this and think that it's going to be easy. I think you know, it's going to be a battle. We're going to have to scrap out there, but I think we're very confident. You know? We have good chemistry, you know, haven't lost since uh, North Attleboro. I think we just have uh, great chemistry going into this game. With more than 100 career touchdown passes, Bobby Mameron trails only Doug Flutie's nephew, Troy, for the most career touchdown passes in the state of Massachusetts. But Mameron is able to hurt a team in a multitude of ways. He's a threat running the ball as well. It'll be tough. Uh, I think the DNs should have a big game containing him in the pocket. And then also the D-backs just kind of sticking with them. Uh, I don't really know anything what they do behind me. So I just kind of put all my trust in them to uh, lock down any of the receivers or anything. So yeah, I think they're going to come up big. To prepare for something like this, for a quarterback like him, four touchdowns away from a state record, uh, you know, we just gotta we just gotta play our game. Everybody's home at the right time, playing our uh, right zone, right man of coverage. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's just doing their job. I think we just have to like limit their offense. You know, great quarterback, good running back, solid team. You know, eight and zero. 
flawless so far. So I think we really just have to contain the quarterback and everyone just has to do their own job for us to come out with a W. I think we just have to, you know, just have a continuous motor throughout the game. You know, all four quarters apply pressure. You can't come out the first quarter and be flat the other three. You just have to, throughout the whole game, we just have to apply pressure, you know. It's just another chance for us to prove ourselves, you know, even from the beginning of the seasons, from the season, the preseason rankings, they didn't have us up that high, you know. It's just always, you just gotta prove, you always gotta prove yourself, and it's just another test that we have to, you know, just something else, nothing new. We love looking forward to that challenge, you know, love being underdogs. Stoughton showed it could compete with Duxbury from the opening kickoff of the game. Marcellus Cox had a 30-yard return to give the Black Knights the ball at their own 43-yard line. Ball by number 13. Two plays later, eyes on Swain Price broke a 57-yard run up the Duxbury sideline to give Stoughton the early lead. Duxbury's first drive got off to a good start as well. The Dragons advanced the ball all the way to the Stoughton 17-yard line. But then Ryan Sullivan picked off Mamoron, keeping Stoughton's early momentum going. This was Mamoron's first interception of the season. Sullivan wasn't done there. On the third play of the ensuing drive, the offensive line opened a huge hole and he went virtually untouched for 47 yards into the end zone. Sullivan also played a part in the two-point conversion. After evading tacklers, Evan Gibb found Sullivan, whose outstretched arms gave the Black Knights a 14 to nothing lead, just four minutes into the game. If Duxbury didn't know they were in for a fight against Stoughton going into the game, they certainly know now. Duxbury's offense was on the move again when they got the ball back. Stoughton's defense tightened up, forcing a fourth down at the 31-yard line. But then, Mamoron showed he's as good as advertised. Just when it seemed like Stoughton would bring him down, he split defenders and fired a 31-yard touchdown pass to put Duxbury on the board. Stoughton then went three and out and gave Duxbury great field position something the Black Knights knew could prove costly. On the first play of the second quarter, Mamoron made Stoughton pay with a 15-yard touchdown pass on third down. Suddenly, Stoughton's early lead was down to just one point. But the Black Knights remained composed and didn't let the game get away from them. They strung together three first downs, moving into Duxbury territory. Then on first and 10 from the 37 yard line, Gibb found a wide open Swain Price for a touchdown. Swain Price's second score of the game gave Stoughton a 21 to 13 lead with seven minutes left in the second quarter. Both teams then traded punts as the defenses finally settled in. That was until the Dragons got the ball back at their own eight yard line with two minutes and 16 seconds left in the half and executed the two minute drill to perfection. Duxbury ran 11 plays in just one minute and 50 seconds. They turned to a trick play at the end of the drive to finish things off. The deception continued on the two point conversion. For the first time since the opening minute of action, the score was tied up. Duxbury started the second half with two lengthy drives but came up empty on ball. On the first drive, they missed the field goal. On the second drive, Andrew Iverson tracked Mamoron down on the fourth and six to force a turnover on downs. Thanks to Stoughton's defense, the game remained tied at 21, heading into the fourth quarter. After another Stoughton punt, Duxbury got the ball back. It was more the same for the Dragons. 
moving closer and closer to the goal line, while Stone's defense was doing everything it could to keep this high-powered offense from taking the lead. Once again, Duxbury faced the fourth down. This time from the five-yard line with six and a half minutes left in the game. It would prove to be a controversial call. Duxbury took a 27-21 lead. On slow motion replay, the ball appears to hit the turf as the receiver comes down. But there are no challenges in high school football. So the touchdown stood and the lead became 29-21 after the two-point conversion was successful. Stoughton now trailed for the first time all game. Their offense was unable to get anything going for most of the second half, but with time running out for a comeback, they would have to find a way to score soon. They faced a 4th and 3 from their own 27 on the ensuing drive. Gibb connected with Swain Price to pick up the first down and keep the drive going. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case on the next 4th down, with Duxbury coming up with the sack to force a turnover on downs. Duxbury put an end to Stoughton's comeback hopes when Mamoron ran for a touchdown on a fourth and two with 24 seconds left, making it 35 to 21. Stoughton faced the challenge of having to go on the road and play the number one team in the state and the Black Knights gave the Dragons everything they could handle, but still came up short. For the third straight year, Stoughton's postseason run ends in the sectional semifinals. Meanwhile, Duxbury advances to take on North Attleboro in the Division II South Championship. Yo, yo, pick your heads up, man. Come on. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up. Uh, don't worry about it. Just great job. Us <laughs> <laughs> together. You could hear a pin drop in that bus ride, you know, um, there's not much talk, you know, everybody's having their little emotional stage, a little crying here and there, and um, everybody's hurting just emotionally and physically after that tough game against Duxbury. I think we shot ourselves in the foot, you know, they didn't do anything that we weren't ready for. I think we knew what they were going to do, and I think it was our own fault that we didn't win that game. So I think we were just all reflecting very quiet very solemn, and I think it was just a, a very emotional bus ride back. Other than that, I think right after the game, we were all in shock, you know. Everything that we had worked for for the past four years just like went away, just like that, you know. But I definitely think it was a pride, it, it, it did help our pride a little bit to know that we weren't even supposed to compete with this team, you know. Like, we weren't supposed to be in it at all. And the fact that we showed them a real test that they hadn't really seen all year, I think that just speaks volumes to like the coaching and like the work ethic we have. I don't want to take too much out of it, but it's definitely a lot easier to say, oh, we lost to the number one team in the state, rankings-wise, than to say, oh, we lost to some, like, random team. I mean, we definitely want to look at it and take the positives out of it, but, I mean, a loss is a loss. Even though the playoff run has ended, their season is not over. Of course, there's the annual Thanksgiving game, but before that, Stoughton will host Dartmouth in a consolation game. Turning the page was really important. Um, I mean, we, we've seen the past couple of years, the Stoughton teams have like taken that next week off. You see like, you could see we can either sit down and crumble or we can, we can rise up and try to win our next game. And I mean, every game means something. You only have so many in your senior football season, so. North Attleboro beat Dartmouth in the other Division II South semifinal, leaving Stoughton with a matchup against second seeded Dartmouth in a consolation game. Since this game has no bearing on the playoffs, it basically comes down to playing for pride, something the Stoughton players don't take lightly. On this cold November night, Stoughton's defense was a story in the early going. Midway through the first quarter, Justin Lee recovered a Dartmouth fumble at the Black Knights 25 yard line. And at the end of the quarter, they forced a turnover on downs tipping the pass at the goal line. The first big offensive play of the game for either side came on a 40-yard pass to put Dartmouth at the five-yard line. Dartmouth scored on the next play, taking a six to nothing lead with seven minutes and 40 seconds left in the second. 
For most of the first half, Stoughton's offense was getting shut down. Then, with four and a half minutes left in the second quarter, Ryan Sullivan and Justin Lee came up with some huge blocks for their fellow running back. And eyes on Swain Price took off for a 49-yard gain. He almost took it all the way, but got tripped up inside the 20-yard line. He followed that up with a 10-yard run, and Lee capped the drive off with a 6-yard touchdown tying the game. The defense came up big again on the next drive as Harry Kimball tipped the pass at the line of scrimmage and Lewis Montero came down with the interception. Facing a third and five on offense, Gibb took off the run and got the first down, but more importantly was injured on the play. The injuries are really starting to add up for the Black Knights as their quarterback joins the growing group of starters stuck on the sidelines. The Black Knights went into the half tied at six and came out with junior Johnny Medina filling in a quarterback for the rest of the game. Stoughton was able to move the ball in the third quarter, starting off with an 11-play drive, but they were unable to turn that into any points. Stoughton's defense stayed strong though, not letting Dartmouth get anything going offensively. It took Dartmouth's defense coming up with a big fourth down stop near the end of the quarter to finally give the offense good field position. The score remained tied at six heading into the fourth, but Dartmouth was driving. They advanced all the way to the seven yard line, setting up a goal to go situation, but on second down, Justin Lee came up with a sack, making it third and 17. On the very next play, Andrew Iverson and Ryan Pierre teamed up to force a fumble. Lino Azul scooped up the loose ball and ran 48 yards, giving the Black Knights excellent field position at the Dartmouth 31. Two plays later, Sullivan ran for a 25-yard touchdown to give Stoughton a 12-6 lead, with 7 minutes and 50 seconds left in the fourth. Stoughton got the ball back four minutes later, still leading 12 to six, but they were unable to run out the clock, giving Dartmouth another chance to score. The Black Knights delivered some hard hits, making it tough on Dartmouth's offense, but they were still able to move the ball up the midfield. On a third and two from the Stoughton 47, Lewis Montero made another big play. Wrapping up the ball carrier in the backfield, setting up a fourth and three with two minutes and 24 seconds left. Stoughton was literally inches away from all but sealing the victory as Harry Kimball nearly blocked another pass. But the throw was completed for a first down and Dartmouth kept the drive alive. Dartmouth later tied it up at 12 with one minute and 10 seconds left. Now the game was in Dartmouth's hands or feet as an extra point would give them the lead. The extra point was no good. This game would have to be decided in overtime. On their first possession in overtime, Dartmouth scored on third down and hit the extra point, going up 19 to 12. Now Stoughton had to score a touchdown to keep the game going. The Black Knights faced a third down of their own, and Ryan Sullivan came through with a six-yard touchdown run, making it 19 to 18. Stoughton took a timeout, and after a long discussion, Coach Burke decided to leave the fate of this game to the offense. Instead of trying to tie it up by attempting an extra point, Stoughton was going for two. The game would end on this play. If the Black Knights make the two-point conversion, they win. If not, they lose.
So in overtime, after I scored the touchdown, we called timeout, and Burke debate made the decision to go for two. He likes to just go uh, win or lose right then and there, no stick around. So he made the decision to go for two, and then Carew was sitting there, and Lino was the one who was saying, go for two, go, uh, let's go for the same play that we just scored on, same play. And um, then Carew was like, all right, I'm going to go with the seniors. And then Lino came up to me and said, just like preschool, ever since then you've been following me, following me right into the end zone. So uh, he called the same play and I followed Lino right into the end zone. Ten games down, one to go. Thanksgiving Day for the last ever game at Sarno Field. We talk about it all the time. Coach Burke talks about it all the time. It's just... We just, it's that little bit extra that we, that we think about um, during practice and when it gets tough that we just need to work hard so this field can get sent off the way that it should. 